Hi everyone, I'm Bree the Plant Lady and today I want to give you a special behind the scenes tour featuring my beautiful Camellia Japonica collection. There are so many varieties that are in full bloom right now, so let's go take a stroll around my garden. So we'll begin our tour here at Camellia Japonica Royal Velvet. This is just one of those outstanding varieties with the most incredible semi-double flowers covered in blooms. So many more still to come. This is one of my all-time favorite varieties because even when we have temperatures below freezing, the frost damage doesn't show on this beautiful dark red flower. Another camellia that's been blooming for months is Camellia Japonica October Affair. And this is just a particularly beautiful cultivar because it has these, you know, dark pink to soft pink flower blooms, double petals, and often you'll get flowers that are either super stacked or growing in a twirl. Here's a great example of what that stacking of the petals looks like. Jack's Camellia Japonica is one of those plants that if I had to say the one Camellia you should grow, it's going to be this one. You see it's got these gorgeous formal double flowers, this sort of salmon-y pink color, tons of flower buds, beautiful luscious dark green foliage, and a really wonderful tight pyramidal habit. It's just perfect for a foundation landscape. And I'm so excited to show you little babe Camellia. This, of course, I bought because I call my little kitten Little Babe. That's her nickname for Ava Grace. But isn't this flower so beautiful? And look at how many flowers there are. This is just, oh, I think it's such an extraordinary plant. I will definitely be making some floral arrangements with this this afternoon as well. This camellia here is one of the most extraordinary. This is Stellar Sunrise. This is the solid pink sport off of April Dawn. So this is hardy into zone 6B. Just look at those petals, perfectly stacked. It's one of those flowers that doesn't even look like it's real. Nice glossy green foliage. I have this planted probably a little bit too close to the fence, but that's okay. One of my all-time favorite varieties, this is Roma Resorta. And this camellia actually is the motivation behind the heritage collection that I started when I was working at Camellia Forest. I would go around to different gardens of the Southeast and gather pre-1900 varieties that aren't really available in the trade because I love the stories behind these plants. And in the case of Roma Resorta, this is an, uh, an Italian selection that was imported to the United States by Reverend John Drayton, the then owner of Magnolia Plantation in Charleston. And the original plant is still growing in the collection at Magnolia. And that was actually where I got the cutting for this plant. So I love that I have a living piece of history. Here we have Freedom Bell. This plant has suffered. It's on the very edge. I have sprayed it for, for Camellia Scale. That's, that's what Camellia Scale manifests as. It, you know, in this case, it's actually even on the top of the leaf, but I need to probably spray this plant again because you can see all those white patches. That's active Camellia Scale that hasn't died. So I need to come back today and spray this again. Poor plant. See, it's, it's not happy and healthy like so many of the others. So you see this layer here? That's actually sooty mold. And that's probably coming from honeydew of an insect that's eating something in this woodland swamp. You know, it might be feasting on something from these sweet gums. I'm not exactly sure 
what's causing it on this camellia because it's not an active insect on the camellia. So this plant is blooming just a little bit. It's Camellias are really funny. They, they, they need shade, but they actually do need some amount of summer sun in order for them to set flowers. And so when you grow them deep in a woods like this, it can be hard. But see, what happened is this tree here got struck by lightning and it's sort of slowly falling apart. And that's providing a lot more light in this woodland. And so my goal this year is to get out here and start trimming back at least some, removing some of this invasive uh, Ligustrum sinensis. I'm not gonna try and tame the entire woodland, but I would love to be able to extend my camellia collection down a little bit farther, um, you know, maybe another 50 feet or so. And in order to do that, I have to remove all of this invasive privet. If you watch Jim and I's no, Rule, no Rules Gardening videos, you'll know that tomorrow, Jack's, which I showed you earlier, is gonna go up against Lemon Glow. Now, these flowers are, are a bit done, but look at all the buds that are still to open. And you see, this is a tiny plant. I, I got this as a one quart or two quart. But I like planting camellias at this size. It's a really easy hole to dig. And you can see this is just a fabulous plant in every way. Nice, dark, lush, glossy green foliage. And of course, these incredible formal double flowers that are very pale yellow. Here's Happy Higo. This has been blooming for such a long time. Really does make me happy to see this. I can see it from my kitchen window. These gigantic flowers, even when they fall, they fall whole. And these were traditionally planted in Japan at the grave sites of samurais and were maintained by family members for centuries. And um, I just think that's a really wonderful legacy to have. I, you know, I, I think that's really meaningful to plant something in memory of a family member and then lovingly care for it. Part of the joy of growing all these beautiful plants is to be able to use these flowers in creative ways. So here's a floating arrangement with royal velvet, camellia, hellebore flowers, edgeworthia blooms, and those wonderfully sweet, fragrant clematis armandii that have just started to open. Over here, this floating arrangement, I've got a bunch of different varieties of camellias in bloom right now. So Jax, this is Stellar Sunrise, and this is October Affair, mixed in with all these different hellebore flowers. It's just such a beautiful, cheerful addition to my back patio. So this floating arrangement has little babe camellia one big royal velvet, and then some of these gorgeous anemones that have just started to bloom. I'm also gonna add some of this sweet smelling Clematis armandii. And then I got some branches of Forsythia to float in here, just to add a pop of yellow. So I still have some holes, so that means I get to keep going out and collect some more. And the finished floating arrangement looks so cheerful and beautiful. Again, with that little babe camellia, royal velvet camellia, various types of hellebores, that sweet fragrance of clematis, and then some forsythia and anemones to just round it out. Neat diversity and such a fun way to display the flowers in your garden. I hope you've enjoyed this camellia tour from my home garden and that you'll be inspired to plant some for yourself and make beautiful floating arrangements. Thanks so much for watching everybody. Happy spring!